from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, Levi Morgan. Got it. That's he huge. Got it. Oh, wow. Hundred and five line of sight. I'm Hunter Phelps. As an outdoor producer, I've had the chance to travel to some unbelievable places and have met some amazing people along the way. Luckily for me, some of these people were needle movers in their industry. This turkey season, I teamed up with my best production buddies, Micah Morgan and Joe Cato, to shed light on just a few of them. Follow along this season as we hunt with athletes, artists, and hunting legends and get the inside scoop on how they move the needle. the past eight years, I've learned quite a bit from you shooting on this range right here. Yeah? Is yeah. that how long we've been working together? You were actually like my first client I ever had when I was just started out. Boy, what about that? You didn't tell me that then. I took a chance, huh? You did take a big <laughs> chance. You've won a bunch since then in the past eight years. Yeah. How many have you won in total? Uh, 15 worlds, 13 shoot of the years, and 12 triple crown. I've been a turn pro in 2006, so. Do your math. We've been stacking them in there, bud. Was there ever like a time when you thought this might not be for me or you didn't catch a break or? Yeah, I mean, there were several times, one for sure that I remember. A lot of people don't even know that story, but I mean, this was my dream since I was a little kid. I mean, staying on 3D ranges since I was five years old, you know? And it was as much as my dad's dream too. He, he saw something in me when I was very young, but I guess so I turned pro when I was 18 didn't go to college. I had scholarships to play ball in college and just knew this is what I wanted to do. And so 2006, I turned pro, spent the whole year working, laying rock as a mason. Never even made a top five my rookie year uh, as a pro. Never made a dime really. Had no sponsors. So that was a rough year. Met Samantha. She moved to North Carolina. 2000, so that offseason I worked so hard. So 2007, First event I went to shoot and didn't make the finals again. And if you don't make the top three in this game, right. you don't get paid, right? And so it was just discouraging and I was broke. And so I was going to the second ASA of the year. I was 19 years old. And Samantha said, hey, you know how much money we have in the bank? And I was getting packing to leave. I said, no, I haven't checked. Yet. She said, we're negative $700 in our bank account. And so right then and there, I just said, I'm not doing it anymore. You know, I've worked so hard and my whole life's been poured into this. So I called my dad. I said, Dad, I'm not going. I just wanted you to know first. I said, I'm giving it up. I said, I put everything I've got into it and it just ain't working. And he said, there's a little bit of silence on the phone. And he said, son, if you go one more time, just one more chance, I'll pay your way and you can pay me back later. He said, I just want you to give it one more chance. All and, on the table at that point, right? Yep, and something clicked, man. I went to that tournament, and even after the first four targets, I shot four tens. I'll never forget, Darren Christianberry hit four fourteens, and he was 16 points ahead of me after four targets. And that just when it clicked. I said, now or never, bud. <laughs> Lay it all out here. Your whole life comes down to right now. This is it, bud. Yeah. And I, I set a world record for the highest score ever shot as a pro, and it still stands to this day. I've never beat it. My first win. You went straight Ricky Bobby on it. I went Ricky Bobby, and I've lived <laughs> by that motto ever since. I'd win or wreck the car trying. So, right. Yeah, we still take that mindset to it. And I think, you know, over the years, I just, it was kind of like God's way of showing me this is where I'm supposed to be. You know, every time I doubt it, I just remember back to that. Like, I tried to quit. Yeah. And I just don't think that was what I was supposed to do. Right. I've always heard right before you succeed in any way, you're probably going to go through a hardship. Yep. Or you're going to, you know, hit rock bottom. But if you can push past that. Yep. Yeah. That's when it clicks. That's when it clicks. Yeah. 
Well, like I said, you've taught me a lot on the range, but I'm about to show you something in the woods this week. Yeah, see, you, I never claim to be no expert turkey <laughs> hunter, but I know that you're, that's your field right there. I'm just decided to go and watch the sun come up. But. That's right. We're going to see more than that. All right. From Uniontown, Pennsylvania, Levi Morgan. He oh, got, got it. it. That's he huge. Got it. Oh, wow. Even though every win has been a battle since the first one, Levi has since become the most decorated archer of all time. In his early years, Levi's love for archery came from Owen. He knew that honing in his accuracy with the bow on the range resulted in more successful hunts in the field. Today, Levi is still pursuing his passion for hunting, only now with a production crew in tow, filming for the top rated show, Olaf, which is where Micah, Joe, and myself come in. Five line aside. We're making sheep hunting great again. this morning. Levi. What? You know what I love about turkey hunting the most? Especially with you. You thought it'd be good? What? It definitely levels out the playing field a little bit. I can't shoot a bow as good as you, but I think I can crawl better than you can. You can't hide better than me. You can't hide better than me, but mm -hmm. you can call better than me too, so there's that. That's a fact. I just like watching them get shot in the face. That's my favorite part. Yeah. I hate losing. And we're losing right now, but I'm about tired of losing. Yeah. I, it ain't it don't last for, for so long. We're gonna win eventually. What does Andy Morgan say? They gotta get it right every time. We just gotta get it once. right once. That's right. Let's go get it right, dude. Let's get it right. When hunting with your buddies, I learned that there's a time to sit around and cut up and a time to get serious and get to hunting. After a tough morning so far, we're ready to make something happen. Right there, still, they're in the same spot they've been strutting, right in this cut corner. Problem is, there's a bunch more of them. There's probably eight or ten. How far are they? They're probably a hundred yards from us. But if we can get, we can keep this ridge right between us. We just need to stay low, come up and get in position. It looks like they're working up. If we get up in them clumps of trees, I think there's enough terrain. They, they'll never get us. They ain't saying a word. They're just strutting. Mike, are you good? Yeah. Just get in position, let them come. Lines cool. pop up and shoot them. It's these up there. I mean, at this point, we gotta take what we can get. Right, so. Exactly. I'm about tired of trying to call him in. <laughs> He's only 20 yards from the edge. Seconds. Oh, 
We're gonna have to go. Go ahead, her. Oh, he can sneak it on him. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta get right in there. <laughs> Me and you and Micah here have seen a, a ton of stuff die over the past few years, and for some reason it just never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> no, <that was> fun. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta go in kill mode, you know? No, I was I kept I elbow Micah. He was right over my shoulder. I said, yeah! <laughs> I could feel him because I knew that gun was gonna kick and it was gonna jump bad. Well boys. What a week, dude. It's a good way to end it. Good job. Micah? <laughs> Let everybody see this face. Yeah. Mm -hmm.